Hello everyone. Thank you for once again joining me on my YouTube channel. Today I come to you with a topic that seems to be the number one that people want to hear about, which is the selection of males in guppy breeding. Um, this is kind of a topic that I've been leaving off and putting off because it's a bit complicated and from one strain to the next you might not have quite the same selection process. So without further ado I'll get right into it. Um, when you are breeding guppies you got to have a goal. So with that goal is how you select your breeders. And for me personally, I like to show my fish in the International Fancy Guppy Association, IFGA.org is their website, an uh, organization that's been around uh, since the 1960s and their standards have been used by other organizations and adapted for what they were using them for such as the International Beta Congress. So it's a very good standard that a lot of people uh, like and it's what I breed for because I do show in the IFGA. Um, with that said, you may not necessarily have any interest in breeding uh, for show or breeding to IFGA standards you may just have particular traits or things that you want to see with your guppy line and that is perfectly fine uh, but you got to know what you want to do you can't go into breeding of guppies willy-nilly because you'll just end up with a bunch of fish that all look different uh, that do not have quite all the desirable traits and things that you would want. So first and foremost, figure out what you want, what you're going to breed towards, and then select from there. When I'm selecting my breeders, the first thing that I'm looking for in the males is an overall shapely fish. Okay, looking primarily to begin with, with my number one first priority will be to match uh, a dorsal that matches the caudal. Okay, in the IFGA we're looking for a dorsal caudal color match. Um, but for you, you may say you may have a red, white, and blue fish. You may want a red body, uh, blue caudal, and a white dorsal. In that case, you're going to want to pick out and make sure that the fish you're going to breed, its dorsal color is correct or what you're looking for as close as you can out of what you have to that as your number one selection. Uh, dorsal color is the one of the hardest things to fix if not the hardest thing. Followed by dorsal shape. Dorsal shape is the number two although not by much. Uh, it could very well be tied for number one if you will on the first thing you want to look for. And in the IFGA, in the deltas, we are looking for a parallelogram shaped del dorsal that is three units long to one unit wide in proportion to the size of its body. Okay, for the deltas. For uh, veils, you're looking at your four to one ratio, four units long, one unit high and five to six to one tapering down to a point and more of a thin skinnier dorsal for sore tails that's the ifga standards um and like i said proportional to the fish but the size of the dorsal and potentially even the shape could not be fully developed in length at the age that we are selecting our breeders. And then guppies, I recommend the ideal age to start breeding them is three months old, all the way out to five. They're still very far from being fully developed, but they are most fertile 
at this age. So that's the age we're generally picking out, and it can be hard because some things also as such as color in a lot of strains will not be fully developed in that age. So you got to kind of know your line a little bit, watch your line carefully develop, uh, color up as they age to know, get an idea on what good coloring is for that age group of breeding. Um, so, like I said, we'll go back, dorsal color that matches the caudal for me is primarily or matches the color that you are looking for in your dorsal. And dorsal shape are the first two things I'm looking at. From there, I'm moving on to caudal shape. I want to select a male that has the top and bottom lobes are equal. So they come out with the same angle and to the fur to the same back point on the top and the bottom. So you have a nice even squared off equilateral triangle or isosceles triangle if you're looking for a veil. Um, you could also, you know, what sword you're looking at your point. Are they coming to a point? Are you if it's a double sword, if one sword is sticking out further than another? That may not be so de uh, desirable, um, and I'm sure some strains may, of swords may grow their bottom sword or top sword faster than the other. Um, so that's just something that you would have to know with your line after watching them for a while on what they do. But in general, with the deltas and your veils, you want a nice even top and bottom lobe. You don't want nothing in the, where the corners are starting to heavily round off. Although a lot of your deltas and veils at that age are going to have kind of a rounder caudal shape because they're not quite fully developed yet. Um, but you're just looking for evenness. You don't want anything angled or section missing out um, when you're looking for the shape of your caudals. Um, so, like I said, we're starting with the dorsal shape and color, then we're working on the caudal shape. I do look a little bit at body shape at this time. We don't want anything with a, uh, what we call ridge behind the eye, so it comes out straight, and then it's got like a big hump before it continues the rest of its body. You want a nice smooth transition along that top line of that fish. Um, you don't want anything with a bent spine or a heavy curve uh, in its spine or kind of holding down. Um, you do ideally would like a thick peduncle, the area between where the stomach comes out and the caudal. That section of the body, you want it nice and thick because that will tra transform on down to your males as they get older being able to carry the caudal. However, that's not too big of a concern for me and the males because a lot of that is coming from the male side uh, female side of the genetics um so it, it basically the dorsal is number one caudal shape would be maybe number two anything with the caudal related shape um and with number two you can tie it if you're working with something like half black lines. Uh, the Moscow genes have gotten into the hat black lines uh, over the last 10 years and it really did some damage to the quality of that hat black. And that hat black area is basically from the start of the dorsal all the way back to the caudal. That area of a hat black should have a nice dark deep black. It shouldn't have too much sheen to it which is typical and that's been coming through, uh, like I said, from the Moscow. From years ago, we used to not have that problem. Thankfully for me, after a lot of work in many, many, many generations and some crossing, I'm able to get all of my lines producing a very high percentage of males that will meet the IFGA standard for half black. Uh, but along second line, when you're working on half blacks, you're kind of mixing that with the caudal shape and body color. You want to prioritize that second when selecting a breeder. Um, and then from there we can go on to caudal 
color. You may be dealing with a variegated fish with uh, you want, let's just say it's got dots in its caudal. Um, you want that equally distributed. You don't want something so blotchy. You want it as close as you can equally distributed or if it's a bicolor, two colors, you want those two colors to be equally distributed throughout the fish. So third in line, I will be looking at that. I'll be looking at if it's a green, you know, greens have a tendency sometimes to show up blue. Uh, so I'm going to select if all else is equal with the fish. I will go ahead and start selecting um, along the third, fourth in line in there uh, for the most greenest standout green. Uh, if you're having a problem with your green lines though, showing more blue than green, then you may actually right underneath your dorsal shape and color, uh, number two priority for you may be uh, your call of color. Um, lastly, and it's far from the most important. And it's the last thing I look at if everything else is equal and you got all those other things that I'm looking for. Then I'll look at the size of the male compared to the other ones that are also equal. And I will generally pick the best two males out of a drop to put on to three to four females. Um, most of your size, most. I'd say a good 75% of it's going to be carried over by your females. So I would not be too worried about size. Now I'm not going to select a male that's one third or maybe, well maybe I would at half the size of some of the others, but a significantly small or runt of the litter, I may not necessarily pick that fish. I may give up a little something in one of those other categories I, I mentioned uh, to not have such a small fish. But in general, my least concern, as long as it's a medium or bigger size fish, not the smallest of the litter, very smallest, then I'm going to pick that last. But a lot of people, oh, I just want big, 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 big. That's all that they're breeding for. And I don't recommend you doing that. Um, you may end up with a bunch of big fish, but the fish may have a lot of other undesirable traits uh, that are not very pleasing to the eye. Um, and that's really what the IHJ is doing. We're, we're looking at creating a fish that just kind of flows and everything matches. And it's just a real nice, sharp fish. Um, that is what the IHA standards breeds for. So I do not recommend that you just get stuck on one thing. Um, and you will find that if you work on the right things, all those first things that I had mentioned, after a few generations, you're going to have several males that will start showing all those traits that you have been breeding for. And at that point, you can start prioritizing. You'll have the luxury of picking the bigger fish or male out of a drop. Um, but that should not be when you're heavily working on a line to correct issues. Should not be a priority at all of size. Uh, not with the selection of, of your males. Like I said, a lot of it's going to get passed down on your females anyways. So... With that said, that is my general order, and it really just depends on what you're breeding, uh, you, what you have that you may have to prioritize a little bit. But as long as you stick to making sure you've got a good dorsal color, color match or the dorsal color of what you are looking for in dorsal shape, keep those at the top of your priority and let the rest of it fall in as it will with size on the male being your least concern. So with that, I will leave you. I recommend that you like and follow my YouTube channel, Quality Guppies, which should be where you are viewing this video. It great help. I'm almost to my thousand subscribers and that will help me 
uh, allow me to modernize my channel and help me upgrade my equipment, uh, buy some editing, um, editing programs, and I, you can also find me on Quality Guppies on Facebook. And if you have some questions, uh, you can go ahead and get a hold of me at Quality Guppies at yahoo.com if there's anything at all that i can do for you you can get a hold of me at quality guppies at yahoo.com until next time happy fish keeping